happy 61st birthday to the billion dollar man, Tom Cruise. Welcome everybody to Entertainment Tonight. So you could say he was almost born on the 4th of I July. I see where you're going with that. <laughs> um, from his iconic films to his high profile romances, tonight we celebrate all things Tom, the man the New York Times dubbed Hollywood's last real movie star. Listen, I love movies. Am I dead? I know that in my lifetime, I can only make so many movies. You know this car? I know this car. How do you know this car? When I do something, I, I just commit to it, you know, 100%. I don't know how else to do it. Show me the money! There's a payoff for Tom's passion. Where's my shot? $10 billion. Yep, we added up Cruz's ticket sales over the last 35 years, and that's the staggering amount of money his blockbusters have made. I wonder if you ever have those moments, quiet time, where you do sit back and maybe kind of have a pinch yourself and think, you know, I will be talked about in the history books of cinema. Like, this is a legacy. It's unbelievable. I, I Look, I do pinch myself every day. You know, we talk about it. I don't take anything for granted. I, I remember being 18 years old making taps. And I remember being four years old and thinking, I want to make movies and yeah. I want to travel the world. Here's Tom's box office breakdown. Top Gun Maverick, the sequel, was the first billion dollar movie of Tom's career. What the enemy doesn't know is your limits. As for Ethan Hunt, so far the six films in the Mission Impossible franchise have earned $3 billion worldwide. The seventh, Dead Reckoning Part 1, hits theaters July 12th. Now here we are in Rome. This is so out of body and in body. I'm like, what is happening? This is wild. And it's something that I've never taken for granted. And I, you know, I, I do. I just feel very yeah, privileged. Tom's also the first actor in history to star in five consecutive films that grossed $100 million in the U.S. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! A Few Good Men, The Firm, Interview with the Vampire, Sickness and death could never touch you again. Mission Impossible and Jerry Maguire. You complete me. I just don't want this to end. I want to work. So what's Tom's secret formula? You know, I make movies for audiences and I, we work so hard and we think about them the whole time and when you see how excited they are and how much they appreciate it, it's just beautiful. It's not about being a movie star, it's about being an actor and concentrating, you know, on that and finding my, you know, finding roles that are going to be challenging to me and that are going to be a progression. And here's another reason behind Tom's success. He works hard and earns the respect of his co-stars. I watched this guy and he was fire. He was just fire, you know? And yeah. He took his stuff and he took it to another level. He took it another direction. I think that's fantastic. He's a wonderful actor, Tom, and he's a growing actor. This is the best work he's ever done. Tom Cruise, you know, if I didn't have this great man here, you know what I mean? No, but Tom, he's Debbie, just fantastic. Debbie the other one, Debbie the other one. <laughs> he's a really great guy. Working with Cruz was the greatest experience in my life. I've learned more about filmmaking, I've learned more about movies, about how to treat people, and just how to get the most out of every day. He gets up with a smile every single day. He's super inspiring. He's one of the last true movie stars with a capital M and a capital S. Do you like a little bit of danger? Yeah, sure. I enjoy excitement, yeah, I guess. I mean, I've been doing stunts since I was about four years old. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to make movies. I wanted to fly airplanes, travel the world, uh, meet people. It really has been that kind of adventurous life for me. That life of adventure led to what the 61-year-old called the biggest stunt in cinema history, or Dead Reckoning Part 1, opening in just nine days. I can jump off a cliff into a base jump. This is far and away the most dangerous thing we've ever attempted. I was training, I was ready. You have to be razor sharp when you mm -hmm. do something like that. So it was very important as we were prepping the film that that actually was the first thing because you don't, I don't want to drop that and go shoot other things and then have my mind somewhere else. Everyone was prepped, let's just get it done. It's even with the car chase, you know, I'm driving, I'm drifting with one hand on cobblestones with Haley in the car, I'm like, all right, you know. So it was plenty of challenges. So how'd he pull it off? Years of planning, over 500 skydives, and 13,000 motocross jumps. You can chalk it all up to his passion for film.
As soon as I started making money, I just that's all I spent my money on, movies. And a pension for pushing the limits. A little push, there. man, I can't help it. Wait till you see the stunt. It's one of the best, it's one of the best crashes I've ever seen. Are you certifiable doing all these stunts? <laughs> I, know. I can't help myself. I can't let anyone else have all the fun. Some of the dedicated Daredevil's most jaw-dropping feats, 2011, scaling the world's tallest building in Dubai. You're thinking, I don't want to fall, you know? Three, two, one, action! I do sprint drills up and down the building just to train my body physically in those, in those temperatures. Because when you're making a movie, it's a 12-hour day. 2015, holding his breath for six minutes. They didn't want us doing it at first. I said, listen, I can do this. You know, I trained uh, free diving. Sometimes it was like three and a half, 345 for every take, and I had to be doing it every single time, uh, take after take. Let's go. That same year, he clung to the side of an airplane during takeoff for eight separate takes. I was thinking, <laughs> because we're worried about bird strikes. I had contact lenses. It was very cold. Like, it's not like I'm you don't feel that at fear. It's just it doesn't stop me from doing it. I kind of enjoy that feeling. And for 2018's Mission Impossible Fallout, Tom, who's a real life pilot, climbed into a helicopter mid-flight. What goes through your minds when you're doing that? Don't die. <laughs> you're learning how to fly a helicopter and fly aerobatics yes. in a helicopter. And it took many weeks. You don't stall a helicopter. It's, it's either flying or it's not flying. And then when it's not flying, there is no recovery. The adrenaline was flowing, let me tell you. You know, I've broken my nose a couple of times. I've gotten teeth knocked out, broken fingers, and Ow. my ankle. They only separated six ribs. That's not too bad for a mission movie. I mean, how they allow you to do this with the insurance? I don't even ask. I don't, I literally, I'm a producer on movies also, but I don't, there's certain questions I don't want to know. Tom's work behind the scenes has only gotten more intense, too. Do you see yourself getting involved in other aspects of filmmaking? Right now, I've got enough worries just trying to become the best actor that I can possibly be. I'm getting involved uh, over the past couple of years, uh, more involvement in the overall process of film in terms of developing the script. Nearly four decades later, Tom's produced 20 movies and counting. It was something I wanted to do. It's something that I felt ready to do, and I welcomed the challenge. My interest in movies and, and making the kind of films that, that I wanted to make, and that's why I did it. Next up, the final frontier. Tom set to become the first civilian to do a spacewalk for his next movie shot partially at the International Space Station. How are you preparing for that? Yeah, it's, it's very technical. There's a lot of elements that, that have to go in and it's, uh, it's a wonderful story. And so we're working hard on that one. It's so early on. I, well, the only thing I hope we could pull off, I can't tell you. Oh, come on! I just, but it's if, just you if and we me. Pull, if we pull it off, it'll be extraordinary. I just, I, I love movies so much. It's like a dream. I can't explain it any other way. This, this wonderful dream that I just think, God, I just don't want this to end. So when did Tom's obsession with movies begin? Just take those old records on the shelf. I remember being four years old, literally, and the moment that I wanted to make films, I wanted to travel the world, I wanted to fly. <laughs> You know, I mean, when growing up, I, I moved around a lot, and I really don't have a lot of friends, you know, around. But, uh, you know, I do keep in close contact with some of the friends in my family. Thanks to his parents' unstable marriage, Tom grew up a nomad, attending 15 schools in 14 years. He and his three sisters grew up poor. But one of his biggest struggles? Dyslexia. Tom was diagnosed when he was just seven years old. It's only helped me in my drive as an artist and, and as a person because I've had to work so hard for everything that I've gotten. It doesn't affect me now like it did when I was growing up at all. Well, I feel you've got a choice in life. You can either, you can turn negatives into positives and make things happen for you on any level. I think that's the important thing that I realized in growing up, you know, with dyslexia, with the moving around, that it was an adventure for me. And you have to look at it that way, that it's going to help me be a better person and you know, it, it enabled me to be a better actor. As a teen, Tom went to seminary in Ohio and studied to become a Catholic priest. After two years, he dropped out and packed his bags for New York City. How's your family reacted to this? No, they were very supportive. Were they surprised? No. Uh-uh. No. 
And I thought they would be because it just kind of came out of left field. I thought it did, but uh, you know, my mother, uh, stepfather, and family very supportive of me. When you decided not to go to college to pursue acting straight out of high school, how did you know you were going to make it? I didn't. <laughs> and that was exciting. Uh, just take a chance. Uh, you know, I just, I want to live life to the fullest. Just a couple years after his move to the big city, he scored his first major movie role in Taps. But 1983 was the year that put Tom on the map. So I, I just feel, you know, that I am lucky to have gone this far in such short time. Hey, tell me, pony boy, what's it like being a hero, huh? I just came through um, workshops with Francis Ford Coppola for his next film, The Outsiders. That was E.T.'s very first interview with the actor back in 1982. He was just 20, teasing his part in the ensemble cast. We're talking Patrick Swayze, Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, and Matt Dillon. Get your feet off my chair and shut your trap. Who's gonna make me, huh? I was ready um, to, you know, to carry a film after The Outsiders and Taps and everything. But still, like anything, a lot of pressure. You know, I was scared to death. <laughs> Well, Tom overcame that fear. Barely four months after The Outsiders, he was back with Risky Business. The instant classic turned Tom into Hollywood's newest leading man. It's my first starring role. I was in every scene. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the slide scene. Yeah. Yeah, I look, I remember it like it was really yesterday. And I just, you know, took my pants off and, and was slid across. And then uh, then I called the, the uh, prop guy over, the set dresser. I said, look, give me, give me some, you know, spray. And I sprayed the floor so that I would slide and then I would stop. So that's, that's how we got the opening frame. Portia, there is no substitute. Yeah, that part landed Tom his first Golden Globe nomination and put him in the same conversation as other young stars of the moment, including Timothy Hutton and Sean Penn. What Sean is gonna get cast in, I'm not gonna get cast in. You know, I mean, if, if they want Sean, I mean, they're not looking for my style. I mean, the only competition I have is with myself and making myself a better actor and a better artist. I'm my, <laughs> my biggest challenge, you know. Because I'm going to take a lot of chances as an actor. You better have fun while you're going along. Yeah, you better have a good time or, <laughs> you know, you're going to be a very sad person. What you might not know, Tom turned down the lead role in Footloose, which of course went to Kevin Bacon, to star in All the Right Moves. We didn't quit, you quit! We shot the film faster. It was a real physical film. Um, so I had to deal with another element. I trained hard for the film, and I played all the football myself. And I ended up losing like about eight, nine pounds in a week. E.T. was there as Tom, Leah Thompson, and Craig T. Nelson shot the football flick about a young athlete trying to escape a dying Pennsylvania mill town. It was filmed with real life locals also struggling through a recession. I feel really excited to see all these people out here and I feel really happy that, that they're so excited about being here. I don't know. I want to go to college and study music, but we can't afford it. You know, I mean, I came here and I felt, you know, really guilty about everything that I had driving through this town. I went back to my hotel room and I sat there and I just, like, cried. And I realized that everything I have is, is privilege. And that, you know, I feel that one of the reasons, hopefully, you know, that God gave me what I have is that I, he realizes I'm not going to take advantage of the gifts. Any quitters here? No, no sir! If I look like a football player in this movie, it's because of them. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're not hitting me out there. But, uh, you know, hopefully I hit them just as hard as they're hitting me. <laughs>